How's it going YouTube? My name's Eric Young. Welcome back to another Sang tutorial. Bear with me because I've been having mic problems and there's not going to be a lot of hand holding in this tutorial. I will, however, upload the project files and leave them in the description. Let's get right to it. Alright, today we're going to be looking at how to make this. The Mandalorian intro. So that took me about 10 hours last night to make, so... For the sake of the tutorial, we're going to be doing it about anywhere from a quarter to half as long as that was. We're probably only going to do two or three subjects. The models for each character are saved here if you'd like to redo the same thing. Alright, so here's the project. We're just going to restart. We're going to do a new composition. We'll call this Tutorial Mando. Then we're going to do a new layer, solid, and we'll just call it E3D for now. And then effect, video copilot, element, and then going to want to go ahead and do scene setup. And down here in the start pack, I have all my files saved. I'm not going to explain how to import files into your file manager. You can just look that up on Google. So any of these that are grayed out like this, you don't want to use. So we're going to be looking to use white subjects so you want it to like that we'll start with mando here who's really boba but you know all mandalorians look the same if you just disable his jetpack there we go all right that looks good and that will load in mando and then we're going to do a layer new cam and we're going to set this one to 135 millimeters and then we're going to make a new layer uh null object and go ahead and make that null object 3D. We'll call this Dolly, even though we're not going to be moving. So you have to parent it to the, I think the camera to the, and then grab the, nope, other way around. I always get, there we go. And then you can hold shift and hold the Z axis to move him in and out. And as you can see, he's backwards. So we'll just go in and flip him. Turn that 180 there to zero. And now he's facing us. Now we'll go back to the Dolly and zoom in on his face. All right, there looks pretty. And then this is where the fun begins. We'll go into element. First thing we need to do is reskin him. So we'll go into Pro Shader 2, go to metal. You can buy this on Video Copilot's website, the same as Element 3D. I think the one I used was foil. So let me find that real quick. I don't see foil on. There it is, metal clean. Alright. So we'll just go and drop that on every layer. This part gets a little bit tedious. Alright. And then we're going to change the environment and we're just going to to peer um, let me see if I can open this just to show you what it, I went into paint and I just did 4,000 by 4,000 pixels back. so for that that's gonna make them all he should disappear like now we add a new and there's two ways to do this make sure you have oops, that's, so there's two ways to do this you can uh, we'll start with parallel for now. We'll see what happens. Turn the intensity way up to something like 20. Do cast shadows. Go into your element 3D settings. Go down to red settings. Open shadows and open ambient. Enable it. Turn it to. Enable it. Turn it to ray trace. Before you turn it to ray trace, save your. So that that doesn't. All right. So now. So now it's time to keep the light. So we're going to open. Um, last time I didn't leave any frames, so we'll... I'm going to leave 10 frames. This, and we'll start the into And then we'll just go on one or two frames, sometimes five. And we'll actually keyframe that. Change the... And now... And then as it starts to fade in, somewhere in the middle, we'll start changing the... So, first off, we... In 3D. I have no idea what's. Alright, this is not working. We'll try a point light. So, redo layer, light settings. So, Alright, it should give this. Now it's gonna automatically keyframe that again, so just. Alright, so now we need to get the light on his mask. So go ahead and save. Go to utilities. Select 2D position. It's actually a 3D position. So. Stay right in the middle. Generate 3D null. Okay. 
So now we'll hit P on the light, P on the position. Copy the position to the light. Delete the position holder. And we should just, yep, be able to move the light back out into 3D space. So now I'll hit U to bring up the keyframes again. Go ahead and hit P, keyframe that. And so, oops. We'll move it to the side. So now it fades in. Go forward about a second. I think it's this one. There we go. Slide it across. Now we have it sliding across. So we'll take that about there. And then we'll do easy ease out, easy ease in. Same thing. Go ahead and set the opacity there, keyframe. Set an opacity keyframe in front of it. Set this one to zero in the back. And now we have. sure you get it quick maybe line these up that's way too fast move them out a little forgot how I did this exactly well I just go back to this Okay, yeah, so then you need to be lined up. Just a little bit more room, maybe. Still looks a little off. just needs to fade out a little quicker there we go so it takes some playing and then what we can actually do is duplicate this hit you Keyframe assistant, time reverse. And just move them somewhere around. You're gonna have to redo the easy is easy ease in and the easy ease out. And now that should rotate it back. So We'll stop it from hanging there by playing with it. And to get a better view of what we'll do, we're going to change this to red. So somewhere right here, not the exact top corner. Usually looks good. Delete that keyframe and automate mix now it should turn purple go back over so let's see this whole thing then what we can actually do is hold all of them whoops no, I think it's shh. Alt? Yeah. We can actually extend this out. Make it a little bit slower, hopefully. There we go. Let's 
Let's see what that looks like. That looks a lot better. More Star Wars like. Alright, so now for moving on to your next character. So we're gonna do here. Let's click Control Shift D. That should automatically cut it there. And if I move this over, I can go in here. Go to scene setup. And uh, let me make sure I'm on the duplicate here. Yeah, make sure you're on the duplicate. And we can go ahead and choose our next subject. So let's do um, Kylo next. Right. Rotate him around. We'll just try to get his head in the same rough position. And the same size, roughly. Now comes the annoying part. Adding that texture. So you can just right click, copy material, get rid of blah blah, show Kylo, paste, 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 and then remove boba. Alright, there's Kylo run. So it looks like he needs, needs to be moved up a smidge. Maybe down and back a bit. Because I'm a perfectionist. Yeah, that will do. And then what we're going to do is duplicate the light one more time. This one we'll bring together normally. We'll move the keyframes over here. We'll move Kylo over there. Make sure this fades out nicely to a frame or two. So for some reason this one kind of hangs there for a while and only moves down here. So we're going to mess with the keyframes here. See what we can do. Change nothing. Alright, so I'm going to try something different. Let's try switching this one back to a parallel. And we'll remove all keyframes. And then we're going to do what we did earlier. Go ahead and save. Let's put the point like right there on his mask. Generate. Oop. Generate. Take the position. P. Control C. Go to the parallel light. Hit position. Paste it. There we go. So now we'll just move the parallel light left to right. So we'll hit T, intensity, one, two, intensity, switch that one to zero. That should fade into him. And we'll have this one go left to right. So, I'm gonna take the point of interest, keyframe that, move forward about a second. Hit you. T 
keyframe the opacity, come forward a few frames, keyframe it again, last one set to zero. Easy ease out, easy ease in. Okay, so the light seems to be a little bit off, seems to be a little bit behind him. So what we're going to do is undo those. See what happens if I switch it back to point light. This just takes a lot of messing with, as you see. Oop, not spot. Okay, there we go. That's the effect we're looking for. Set U to bring up keyframes, delete the automatic one. And then we'll do position, keyframe, hit U to bring them back all up. Position. So we want it to be like, probably up a little bit more. No, that's fine. We'll keyframe it. I think it needed to go that far, but okay. doing position move keyframe position let's see which axis was it why no, it's up and down X yeah Okay, it's pretty god that worked. Yep, that looks pretty good. This one goes left, that one goes right. Now we do easy ease out, easy ease in. Then we duplicate the light to do red. Let's find a red light. Layer light settings. And here you can copy the color code. Hit U. Move it. Reverse the keyframes. Easy ease in. Easy ease out. We might do a little bit different something with this last one because this is where it's I'm just gonna end it on two subjects because you guys get it's rinse and repeat from here so what I'm actually gonna do oh, I actually need blue control C you can just close it close it Layer, light settings just control C again there you go so that's going to leave a kind of cool effect. Wait, where's the blue? Stay blue, dang it. There we go. Then we can have this fade out sooner. So it all kind of like fades out together. All right, all faded out perfectly. So we ended this project at about three seconds. So I'm gonna change the composition to 
four seconds because you want an extra second of black. All right, that's pretty much the tutorial, but we have a few more steps, um, optional steps here at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and reach change the ray trace sampling to four. I'm going to turn up the reflection quality. I'm going to go super high with this one. Let's just see what it looks like. 512 high. And then this one, same thing. I'm going to turn up the ray tracing samples to four. And then under reflection, 512 high. And under output, I'm also going to do four times And this composition setting was already 4K. So what you can do is if you wanna upscale something from 1080p to, 4, to 4K, is just take your 1080p composition, make one in 4K, and then drop it in and re-render it. This one's already in 4K, so this is gonna be a nightmare to render. Um, so the last thing we need to do is just go to new, adjustment layer. This is optional. This is color cor correction at this point. You can use After Effects, but it's just easier in my opinion to use. Alright, I'm gonna go to the techniques. I usually add tone mapping first. Need it better. There we go. Now I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna go to edit again being very careful I don't want to crash should actually save real quick and I'm just gonna click delete on all that and I'm gonna add chromatic abrasion negative five almost and then plus five almost on the bottom. All right, and then last thing is exposure. And uh, I need a different shot for that. And then we'll crank the exposure up 0.8. And that just lets you be able to see more. Let's see what a full stop does. Huh. We'll keep it a full stop. Thanks for watching this video guys. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any more future videos.